All right, good morning, Phyllis. Uh, my name is King Yada, and I'm a peer health educator here at San Quentin. And today I want to talk to you guys about your liver and about hepatitis. I want to start off with the liver, though. How many of you guys know where your liver is located in your body? Anybody? It's right here. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's in your right side, yeah. mm -hmm. underneath your rib cage. Mm -hmm. Looks something like this. It's about this size right here. It weighs about three pounds. Mm -hmm. It's located on your right side of your body, under your rib cage. Mm -hmm. And this is what a healthy liver looks like. And this is what a not unhealthy liver looks like. It can be scarred and all that. So your liver is what we call a, a non-complaining organ. Your liver is something that, unlike other parts of your body, it doesn't complain. So if something's going wrong with your liver, a lot of times you won't know it. So that's very important to remember what we're talking about here today. Also, your liver performs over 500 functions in your body. And Obviously, I can't talk about all 500 today, but I will tell you about three, three that I want you to remember. First thing is that your liver is a filter for your body, it filters your blood. And so, everything that you eat, everything that you drink, all the toxins that we take in on a daily basis, your liver actually breaks down these toxins so that your body can function properly. So your liver serves as a filter. The second thing it does is your liver stores nutrients in your body. and so. Everything that you eat and drink, it takes the nutrients, it stores them, and so if you don't eat or drink for a long period of time, then your liver re uh, releases these chemicals and these nutrients into your body so that it will sustain you over a long period of time. Also, your liver also co coagulates your blood. And so when you get cut, your liver releases chemicals into your bloodstream that causes your blood to clot and coagulate so that you don't bleed out. So those are the three things that I want you guys to remember about your liver. Now, the liver is also what we call a vital organ, which means that without your liver, you can't live. So it's really important that we focus on liver health and keeping our liver healthy. Now, how many of you guys have ever heard of the term hepatitis before? Yeah? yeah. yeah? Do you know what hepatitis means? It's uh, some, some sort of sickness of your liver. Yeah. yeah. Actually, what it is is... Inflammation of the liver. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what hepatitis means. Hepa means liver. Itis means inflammation. So combined just means inflammation of the liver. Now, this hepatitis can happen two ways. It can happen, excuse me, virally or non-virally. Today, we're going to focus on the viral forms, of, some of the viral forms of hepatitis. But we also want to talk a little bit about non-viral hepatitis. Now, have you guys ever heard of somebody who drank themselves to death? They drank too much alcohol and they had liver problems and they died from that? Sclerosis. Cirrhosis of the liver, exactly. Cirrhosis of the liver can happen from drinking too much alcohol. And it can happen from also um, taking too many Tylenols, too many um, acetaminophens, Tylenols, Motrins, uh, different over-the-counter medications, um, too, much, uh, too many different uh, street drugs, prescription drugs. All these things have to be processed through your liver. So all that stuff can put, uh, have a strain on your liver and cause your liver to and be, become inflamed and get non-viral hepatitis. So too much medication, too much alcohol, these things can cause inflammation of the liver. Okay. So when we talk about viral forms of hepatitis, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C, all three of these are different forms of hepatitis, different viruses. Hepatitis C is its own virus, hepatitis B is its own virus, and hepatitis A is its own virus. I want to start today with hepatitis A. Now, hepatitis A is a microscopic virus that causes inflammation of the liver. Hepatitis A is what we call acute. And what acute means is short term. So hepatitis A, people develop a short-term illness, an acute illness, and within two weeks to six months, they'll pass it from their body. So just like a common cold or the flu, your immune system will kick in and you'll pass hepatitis A from your body. Your body will naturally fight it off. Three things got to happen in order for you to get hepatitis A. We like to call them the three E's. The first thing is, is you have to be exposed to somebody who has hepatitis A. The second thing is, is there has to be an effective method of transmission. And what that simply means is there has to be a good way for it to get from me. If I had hepatitis A, there would have to be a, a, be a good way for it to get from me to you. 
and from you to him. And the third thing is there has to be enough of the virus in the body fluid in order to pass it. This virus, all three of these, body, uh, all three of these viruses are found in body fluids. So, do any of you guys have any idea what body fluid the hepatitis A is found in? Anything. Any saliva. body fluid. Blood. Saliva. Okay. Blood. We'll say saliva. Let's write this down. Saliva. Blood. What else? Feces. Feces. Okay, let's stop right there. Feces. Hepatitis A is found in feces. And it's passed from person to person through what we call the fecal oral route. Now you guys know what feces is, right? Doo-doo. Yes, Doo-doo, crab, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Human excrement. That's what feces is. So we, it's passed through the fecal oral route. So we know fecal means doo-doo. What does oral mean? Your mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Getting doo-doo in your mouth is how you get hepatitis A. <laughs> it sounds crazy. I know it does, but it happens more often than we think. And I'm going to go through an example and show you how. Now, let's just imagine that I had hepatitis A, okay? Mm -hmm. And I went and I used the restroom, wiped my behind, and I got a little bit of that microscopic uh, amount of doo-doo on my hand, just a little bit. And that microscopic amount of doo-doo on my hand has some hepatitis A virus in it, okay? And now... Um, when I go to wash my hands, I don't wash my hands very good. Or maybe let's say I don't even wash them at all. And then I come out to the yard and I shake hands with you. Mm -hmm. Now the hepatitis A virus goes from my hand onto your hand. Yeah. And let's say you uh, bust open your lunch. And you start making yourself a sandwich. Fingers touching all on the bread. You don't wash your hands. You're touching all over that bread. And you put that sandwich to your mouth. Doodle in your mouth and you put yourself at risk for getting hepatitis A, oh, like that. You guys follow me on that? Yeah. Here's another example. <laughs> Just imagine I have hepatitis A, same scenario. I go use the restroom, I wipe my behind, I get some doo-doo on my hand, it has hepatitis A virus in the doo-doo, and let's say I'm making a cup of coffee. Holding my coffee cup like this, around the rim, some of that doo-doo that's on my hand gets around the rim of the cup, and then you're my homie, you come along, hey, let me hit that coffee. Sure, go ahead. You take it, put the cup to your mouth, doodle in your mouth, <laughs> put yourself at risk for getting hepatitis A. <laughs> so it's passed more often than we think. Also, sharing cigarettes. You guys have ever shared a cigarette or smoked a joint or a blunt behind somebody? They could have had hepatitis A infected. If a person had hepatitis A and they get some of that doodle on their hand, they're touching all over the cigarette or on the blunt or whatever, Put it to their mouth, pass to you, yeah. you put it to your mouth, doodle in your mouth. <laughs> Could, happen. Could happen. So, we know that hepatitis A is found in feces. It's passed from person to person through the fecal oral route. Now, those, I just, we just went through a couple of the methods of transmission. Now, there is symptoms available, or there, there are symptoms associated with hepatitis A. Jaundice, um, fatigue flu-like symptoms, but this is one thing that I want you guys to remember about the symptoms. You cannot tell that somebody has hepatitis A from the symptoms. The only way you can truly tell that somebody has hepatitis A is to get tested. And, uh, you know, these symptoms that I just ran through, you know, these symptoms are associated to other things as well. So if you've got flu-like symptoms, it could be the flu. It could be hepatitis A. You never know. You never know until you get tested to find out. So it's important that you get tested. Um, treatment, there is no specific treatment for the hepatitis A virus, but there is treatment for the symptoms. So say if you had um, flu-like symptoms, the doctor could you know, tell you uh, to get plenty of rest, drink plenty of fluids, and that would deal with those symptoms right there. So there's no treatment for hepatitis A virus, but there is treatment for the symptoms. Now, we talk about vaccines. There is a vaccine for hepatitis A. It's two shots over six months. And it's important that you get both shots to be fully protected from the hepatitis A virus. So there's a big difference between um, treatment and the vaccine. Treatment is for after you've already contracted the virus. 
The vaccine is to prevent you from getting the virus in the first place. So if you wanted to get the vaccine, you have to get tested, find out if you've been exposed to it. If you have, then your body will pass it, your body will have passed it within two weeks to six months and you already have antibodies for it. If you've never been exposed to it, then you'd be eligible for the vaccine. And like I said, it's two shots over six months. Getting these two shots will build up the antibodies in your body to a level where you can fight it off 